Hey everyone, um, welcome back to Ubuntu Lost Videos. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the system slash administration. Now, I said before that um, the preferences area is simple configurations for your user, small things that can't really affect your computer that badly. But administrator is a bit more touchy. You definitely have to have a little common sense when you're in here. You don't want to mess around in here, uh, especially if you don't know what you're doing. But this video is going to give you an example of what you can do, what you can uh, fix, or what you can mess around with, or not mess around with, but what you can configure in here. So let's go ahead and begin. Now we'll start with the computer janitor. This program is new to Ubuntu. Uh, you will notice that you will have to put your password in for these programs as they are system related. But this computer, uh, this computer janitor program is new. Uh, it just came out in uh, the Ubuntu 9.10. It hasn't been fully polished yet. What it's supposed to do is clean up any unused applications that on your computer. It's supposed to track your computer or your applications which are being used, which aren't being used, and kind of give you a way to clean up your computer for space. I'm not sure what the recommended is supposed to be or the optimized is supposed to be. These pieces are blank for now, and I don't know when they will actually be available. <clears throat> but right now, it's giving me all of these unused applications. The big problem I have with this is I do use these applications. In fact, I use them all the time. Ubuntu Tweak, VirtualBox, Light Teams. But I do notice from all of these is that these are external applications that are installed outside of the Ubuntu repository. Meaning, I found an application online on a website and I downloaded it from there and installed it. Now, this isn't, I don't want to clean this up because this application's that I use. So I'm going to say that this program is not done yet. I wouldn't use it. There's nothing you can do here uh, unless you want to clean up all the applications that you've downloaded online. But what you would do is you would check all the applications you want to take off. You, If you wanted to, you can click on the actual application and it'll give you a little uh, information about it. Um, you know, a little what it's supposed to be. It says it's no longer supported, but I use it all the time. Anyway. You will check what you want to remove and then do selected tasks and it's, it'll remove all these files from your computer. And that's basically how that program works. Afterwards we have the disk utility. And here is definitely, it's a new program, but it's a lot more polished, a lot more useful and very, very user friendly I would say. It is aimed to replace the gparted partition editor. Although it's not as powerful as the gparted, it does have really good uh, features. For example, we can erase the whole hard drive if I want to. I don't want to do this. And again, another reason that you have to have some common sense when you come into this area. Uh, right now, though, we can do a bunch of things. We can change the um, type of file system, but this change will actually remove all or erase all of our files, so we don't really want to do that. But biggest thing you probably be in here is to kind of name your partitions a certain name so that you know what is what. Right now I have that name too, Ubuntu. I have this one named Sabayan, another type of Linux. And then we have home, which is all my home files. And then a little 38 gigabyte extended, which is basically a side storage for me, which is called storage. And that's basically how that works. We have uh, the ability to check file systems for errors, as well as if you plug in a USB or any other kind of storage device, it'll be right underneath here. And you can do the exact same stuff with this uh, format, name, check for uh, errors, and so on and so forth. And we have the CD DVD drive. Uh, we can't really do much in here. We can detect media, but because you can't really write much or you can't edit a CD, this is basically what it does. Of course, we can unlock or encrypt and decrypt um, devices. We can detach, powering off, eject media, <coughs> or unmount file system. And that's basically the gist of it uh, for this. The next part will be the hardware drivers. In here, we have a basic idea of drivers. Now, in Windows and in Mac, well, Mac you don't really need to, but in Windows, when you find drivers online, you have to go to manufacturer's website, download this file, follow the directions to actually install the driver, and not a lot of people are computer savvy enough to do it. Well, Ubuntu actually made a very simple application that will install everything for you. Now, it will not work with every single computer, I will say that. 
Not every single computer, not every single piece of hardware is supported yet. But the aim of this is to be able to put in the computer, uh, it works fine, you can see everything, but if you have um, hardware that isn't supported by default, you can click on this part up here, this box up here, will actually be a list of applications or drivers that you can install to improve your system, and then underneath here will be a little description, and all you would do is click on this application here, and then go to enable, and then put in your password on the next little dialog box, and afterwards it'll download and install the driver, and for video drivers it will ask you to restart the computer, uh, for wireless drivers it won't. Um, but that's basically how this works. It's basically click on what you want, enable it, and it's done. That's all you need to do to enable drivers. Uh, that's it. And then the next part we'll have is the language support. Now, by default, depending on what you installed from the installation CD, you will have that default language available to you right now. You can see right now I have English enabled, and that's what I can read. Now, uh, what we can do is we can also change the type of English. We have Philippines, New Zealand, etc. This is for menus and windows. And then of course we have it for a startup and login menu for everyone to see. We can also do keep the same, with well, these two keep the same. Uh, we have keyboard input method. We have iBus. iBus, as I mentioned before, is in the preferences as well. But iBus is mainly for um, non-Latin characters and words and you know letters and stuff. Um, basically like Japanese, Russian, Korean, and so on and so forth. It's just a le another layer that you can read those types of characters. And we can actually install and remove other languages from this little menu here. We have plenty to choose one from uh, basically just check mark here, apply changes, click on that, and you have it installed. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna do that because I don't know what that language was. That was just a simple um, visual.